In Hollywood, you often have to make just one big film, either at the box office or as an awards winner, and you're set for the rest of your career. So imagine how pretty both M. Night Shyamalan and Zack Snyder were sitting after The Sixth Sense and 300, two films which not only broke the box office but impressed critics, particularly The Sixth Sense, which was nominated for six Oscars. Yet fast forward to today and both men seem to be sitting in the same boat again, this time seeking redemption in summer 2013. Redemption at the box office, with critics, with studios, and most importantly, with audiences, as both directors rose to power thanks to impressive fan bases, long before anyone coined the term in Nolan We Trust. What happened? Let's start with M. Night Shyamalan, who was the first out of the gate with 1999's The Sixth Sense. It was a hot script that many studios wanted to simply buy from him and hand over to another director, but the brash young filmmaker stuck to his guns, which paid off literally for everyone involved. The Sixth Sense made almost 300 million domestic and almost 400 million overseas, as well as contributed the line I see dead people to the pop culture lexicon. Shyamalan took the film's success as a mandate from audiences and forged ahead boldly, yet some would argue too boldly. He made few friends at Disney, the studio that released The Sixth Sense, but because they were eager to keep him in the fold, they put up with his artistic attitude. And for a while, that seemed like a good idea. Unbreakable might not have quite clicked at the box office, but it pleased Shyamalan's fan base considerably, and the director rebounded nicely with signs. However, all the while, audiences were beginning to grow wary of his twist endings that seemed to drive the entire story rather than complement it, and many felt the director was seriously pushing his luck with the village. So when Disney exec Nina Jacobson tried to give him notes on Lady in the Water, Shyamalan made a power play and left the studio for Warner Brothers. As a result, Jacobson lost her job at Disney, yet would enjoy her revenge indeed as a dish served cold. Lady in the Water was a huge flop, while she went on to independently produce the hit franchise's Diary of a Wimpy Kid and The Hunger Games. Meanwhile, now without a studio to call home, Warner Brothers certainly didn't want to keep him, Fox gave him a shot with The Happening, which was another flop. Yet somehow, despite two flops and few friends in Hollywood, Shyamalan managed to get his hands on fan-favorite animated series The Last Airbender. Convinced it would be the hit he needed to turn his career around, Shyamalan continued to trust in his own instincts and molded the franchise in his own creative image. It was a huge failure with the film just making its money back, plus it left a dark stain on one of Paramount Nickelodeon's most popular franchises. But most of all, Airbender fans felt so betrayed that it finally decimated any connection Shyamalan had with audiences. And perhaps for that reason, for the first time ever, Shyamalan has let another writer take the lead on his next film, After Earth, Stephen Gagan, who scripted Traffic and Syriana. Plus, this time his star, Will Smith, is taking the lead as producer, with Shyamalan only serving as executive producer. And if anyone knows how to engineer a blockbuster, it's Will Smith, who certainly isn't going to give Shyamalan too much free reign when his son's career is at stake. And a tight leash is just what Shyamalan might need. Now, while Shyamalan might have lasted a little longer at the top before he self-destructed, it can certainly be argued that Zack Snyder's fuse burned faster because it burned brighter. He made an impressive directorial debut with his Dawn of the Dead remake, one of the first flicks to introduce the new trend of fast zombies. But with 300 building on growing mainstream interest in Frank Miller's work thanks to Sin City, Snyder's adaptation of the comic book made him an immediate fan favorite. And just as Disney was eager to keep Shyamalan in-house, Warner Brothers felt that for them, a star had been born. Thus, they dusted off one of their best opportunities for him and the holy grail for fanboys, Watchmen. It was a risky move to hand over such a hallowed property to a new director, and unfortunately, Snyder began to believe his own hype perhaps a little too much. He made a huge deal about being loyal to Alan Moore's opus, yet changed the ending seemingly just for the sake of changing it. He even gave some characters' lines to other characters, even though both were still in the same scene, and short-changed Silk Spectra's backstory. So while the opening credit sequence was pretty boss, Snyder still managed to dilute Moore's work enough so that critics and mainstream audiences couldn't understand why Watchmen is considered the greatest comic book story of all time. Opportunity wasted. But Snyder must be a lot more likable than Shyamalan because even though Watchmen brought in just half of what 300 did at the box office, Warner Brothers wasn't ready to give up on him. They distributed his animated flick Legend of the Guardians and his misguided female empowerment flick Sucker Punch, both of which crashed and burned at the box office. Even worse, that last one seemed to showcase all of Snyder's worst qualities, an over-dependence on slow motion, implied yet ultimately hollow gravitas, and poor female characters. But perhaps Sucker Punch's worst offense of all was that it couldn't even clear the century mark worldwide. However, Warner Brothers still has faith in Snyder, or at least feels he deserves one more chance, Man of Steel. Talk about another huge opportunity served up on a silver platter. 
And while Snyder's wife usually produces his films, this time Christopher Nolan, whose own wife interestingly produces his films, will be there to back Snyder up and probably keep him on a leash as well. So do you think that M. Night Shyamalan and Zack Snyder can find redemption with After Earth and Man of Steel? And are they deserving of not only another shot, but to be trusted with such important properties, especially in Snyder's case? But no doubt about it, these men must deliver at the box office this summer, and it would also be nice if they could please some critics to boot. Although perhaps most important of all, they must repair their relationship with audiences. And speaking of audiences, let your own voice be heard and be on the trailer's annual Top 10 poll. Vote for your top 10 movies of 2012 by going to tinyurl.com slash bttvote2012 now through January 3rd. The link's in the video description. I'm Grace Randolph and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.